we decided to uh, add program notes to the uh, program for, for this evening because there's so much to talk about with our next composer, Victor Herbert, was indeed the seminal composer uh, at the turn of the century, well into the 1920s, early 30s, in fact. Uh, you can read that when the light is better in here, maybe uh, when you get home, but to, uh, if I may, with your permission, I'd like to just share one anecdote with you that uh, was not space for the uh, program notes. Uh, in going through uh, Ed Waters' fantastic biography, if you want to read more about Victor Herbert, this great American composer, uh, Ed Waters' book is the definitive text, but in there, he talks about this idea that uh, I, I heard going through music schools from several different professors, you know, George Gershwin was terrific, but if it hadn't been for Victor Herbert, there might not have been a George Gershwin. Now, what would you say to that, right? And as a young student, I'm going, what? Yeah, come on, you know. Well, here, here it is, here it is. It's in Ed Waters' book. He tells the story of, of the uh, rehearsals leading up to the premiere of Rhapsody in Blue. As you know, 1924, uh, February, right? Aeolian Hall, New York City. Paul Whiteman's the conductor, the, the director. Everybody's all geared up for this thing. At the time, Victor Herbert was indeed one of the go-to guys for music in the United States. So Paul Whiteman invites Victor Herbert to come to one of the rehearsals of Rhapsody in Blue as they're putting it together. And Victor Herbert's sitting there taking this in with a few of his colleagues. And uh, when it's over, George Gershwin leaves the stage, of course, in the piano, and he comes down and he says, uh, Mr. Herbert, do you have any, any comments, anything to say about uh, the piece? And he said, well, uh, Yes, there's that one, there's a transition between this section and that section that if you tried this, without going into details here, if you tried this, it might go a little smoother and you might like it a little, a little better. And he just scribbled out a couple things and handed it to George. Uh, George handed it to Paul, Paul handed it to his arrangements, and within a couple of minutes, this fix got put into Rhapsody in Blue, and then they came back after the break, and that became a permanent part of what we call today the Rhapsody in Blue that we all know. So, Yes, there is some truth to the fact that uh, uh, Victor Herbert did have something to do with George Gershwin's success. Uh, Herbert also did uh, a similar work with uh, no less than Irving Berlin. So there's some interesting anecdotes in Ed Waters' book about that if you care to look into it. But uh, we thought it would be fun. Uh, Victor Herbert put this piece together and it was premiered just a week before St. Patrick's Day in New York. It opened in Cleveland, as your notes say, and then it went to Boston and there was a name change and all that. But uh, this is the first time this has been performed here that we know of. Uh, it's hard to believe it was 1917 when this first came out, but it, it uh, came, by the time it got to New York, there were rave reviews about it, and they had honed it down, and it was, became a real gem. So I uh, hope you can follow the tunes. There's 12 of them, and uh, it's tuneful stuff, and uh, sit back and let this wonderful original, and that's the key, this is original Irish music wash over you, and I hope you enjoy it. 